We are praying, Lord and Master, everlasting Lord, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, we are so grateful to you for the gift of life. We thank you for the day. We pray that, Lord, you will be in our midst. We pray committing this August congregation, the program, into your hand. We invite you, O oh Lord, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, to come and take control over the whole program. We commit the beginning of it and the end of it into your care. We commit all those who are to join our traveling to this place into your care. Those of us already here, we thank you for the traveling mercies that you granted us. We pray and we call upon you, we invite you, Lord, into this program. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that we prayed. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Quay Green, for your powerful prayer. You are all welcome to the 12th Annual Congregation of the College. We acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests who are here to grace the occasion and also help in making it a successful one. We have in attendance the guest speaker, Professor Ernest Kofi Davis. He is the Provost College of Education Studies, University of Cape Coast. We have the Central Regional Minister, Honorable Mrs. Justina Marigold Asa, also in attendance. We have the Minister of Education, Rep. Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Educhum. We have our Honorable Members of Parliament surround. We have our MCEs and DCEs. And my very self, Ms. Dubakidoli, the Acting College Secretary. We will now invite the choir to help us with the singing of the National Anthem. Thank you.
thank you Kwa, for your powerful performance. We also have former principals in our midst. We call on the chairman of the governing council, Professor Dominic K. Danso Mensa, for his welcome address and opening of the ceremony. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Duatankwa Akufuadu, the Minister of Education, the Governing Council, the Principal and Alumni of Kosu College of Education, I welcome you to the 12th Annual Congregation of the College. I acknowledge the participation of the Vice Chancellor of University of Cape Coast, the guest speaker, the chiefs of the land, our honorable guest of honor, representative of the Minister of Education, Dr. Nkansa, Central Regional Minister, Honorable Mrs. Justina Marigold Hassan, the MP Asin South, Honorable Reverend John Tim Podio, media, all protocol duly observed. This congregation ceremony is being held for students of the college who have successfully completed their program of study in the 2018-19 and 2019-2020 academic year. I hereby congratulate the graduates and charge them to let their experiences at the college count in their endeavors. I also congratulate the staff of the college and other stakeholders for working hard to provide the necessary support for graduates to successfully complete their studies. This congregation is to confer the awards of diplomas to the deserving graduates. And now, by the powers vested in me as the chairman of the governing council of Osu College of Education, I, Professor Dominic Kwaku Dansu Mensa, do hereby declare the assembly of the 12th annual congregation of the college duly constituted. Thank you. Thank you, council chair. We'll now call on one of the graduates. Mr. Gideon Osei to give us the valedictory address. Thank you. Thanks for the warm introduction. Chairman of the Governing Council, the Principal, the Representative of the Vice Chancellor of UCC, the Guest Speaker, Distinguished Guest of Honor, Representative from the Ministry of Education, Heads of Department, hardworking staff, family and friends, fellow graduating class of 2020. 
Good morning to you all and welcome to the official graduation ceremony for the 2020 graduates. I am very honored to stand before all of you as the valedictorian of class 2020. Not only because of the awards I have garnered, but more so because I am part of a truly outstanding batch, a batch that has achieved so much, a batch where everyone is so talented. Today is a day to be thankful and to be inspired. Over the next few minutes, I shall talk about people and things we are thankful for. Foremost thanks, as usual, belongs to the Almighty Jehovah for his guidance and stewardship over each one of us. He has steered us through life's journey till now. Here at Fosco, we have received a great education thanks to our staff. We were fortunate to have had tutors who are selfless and devoted to help develop students who are well tailored to handle even more challenging classroom situations. We are prepared to move on and to take in whatever challenges come next in our lives, especially as we begin and continue our service to the nation. How can we forget people like Dr. Kwakwe Siedu, the retired principal, and Dr. Anthony Barbarie? Through the administration, we experience one of the best teacher education in Ghana. All these have propelled us into complete men and women. We benefit from these experiences even in our classrooms today where we have been practicing as national service personnel. Dear colleagues, I want you to know what a great gift is to be prepared as we are because not all schools offer such an advantage. Here, we have had a high degree of academic excellence, and whether you intend to continue your education or not, you can benefit from what you have learned here. Fellow graduates, we can also be thankful for our families. These past three years have presented us with a lot of ups and downs, and it is good to know that we had our families in our corner supporting us along the way. It is very sad to admit that our families are not here with us. I believe that even in their absence, they will be very proud of our achievements. We owe them a lot of appreciation. None other gifts can surpass God's blessing, which we ask for them. Our dads and moms, thank you. Moreover, we can be thankful for each other. The friendships that we have made here will last a lifetime. It is very disheartening to see that most of you, our colleagues, are compelled to stay in your homes and other remote places in order to have this gra graduation. Even though we may not be able to rekindle the fond relationships we established once here for the last time, we can be supportive to the ones we have. In the same way we have supported each other and helped each other succeed in these years at first school, I hope we will continue to provide support and encouragement for each other in future endeavors. Now, what inspiration can we draw from today's event? Only three years ago, we sat through a ceremony quite different from this convocation. It was our matriculation day. That day, graduation seemed far away and the next three years seemed so fresh and new. It was the first time any of us lived on our own or even had to wake up for class by ourselves. During that ceremony, we listened to unfamiliar voices speak and tell us how much we will learn over the next three years. We trusted complete strangers. 
Many of us quickly made new friends, joked around and acted like everything was better than it had ever been. But deep down, whether we want to admit or not, a sense of fear enveloped us. The fear of the unknown, the fear of failure, the fear of the future. We endured hard times during the first few weeks. My colleagues here will remember a term, destiny. It was a term given to calluses we used in cleaning up the compound. I still remember how our ladies had the courage to sit by us during Sunday's church service with our one and only one traditional cloth. I know some gentlemen are also muttering on how we had to cope with our ladies' hair and moku moku, especially for the first month. But today, we have all gathered here, holding our heads high, feeling proud of how much we have been able to cope with all our fears and difficult situations and sailed through as victors. Not even COVID-19 could stop us from completing our course. Indeed, once more, we are victors. Now, we are graduates. Few moments later, we shall be graduates. One thing that we will reflect upon as we throw our graduation cap in the air is the way Fosco has been our home away from home for the past few years. Why? Because it is so difficult a job to take a group of fresh minds and try to show them the life skill that they will need to be successful. This graduation ceremony marks the end of yet another extraordinary chapter in our lives. With this chapter closed, I am certain that many of us are already anxious about starting the next one because unlike an English book, we cannot skip through the pages of life to see how long the next chapter is going to be. We all have a book of life that has not yet been written, and every day that passes is another page we write on ourselves. Luckily, as first school graduates, we have been given all the paper and ink we need to write our own stories. And with the love and support of our families, friends, and fellow graduates, our stories will surely become bestsellers. Fellow graduates, we don't have to stop here. Graduation is not an end goal in itself. It is instead a part of the larger journey of life. This graduation has already shown us how capable we all are of accomplishing our goals when we commit ourselves to them. As we all continue in our lives, let us remind ourselves with this quote from the renowned former British statesman, Winston Churchill. He said, success is never final, failure is never fatal, it is courage that counts. Yes, we have achieved great heights, but that's never final. We may also fail along the road, but we shouldn't stop. We need the tenacity to take each new problem knowing that we are equipped with the necessary tools to tackle our futures. When you live here today, dear colleagues, celebrate what you have accomplished, but look forward with an eye toward how you too can be the inspiration for others, especially the people that have been entrusted 
unto us. Now, I will say that congratulations, class of 2020. Thank you, Mr. Gideon Osei, for your concise valedictory address. We will now call on the cultural troop for a cultural display. But before we do that, let's acknowledge the presence of our chiefs, the chiefs of our land. We also have the director of GES, Mrs. Mary Mercy Ekria Lisa, in attendance. We also have the municipal fire commander and the regional Zoom Lion manager. You are all welcome.
Thank you very much. That was a very impressive performance. We will invite the choir to help us with the singing of the Kalijan thing. Thank you.
tete won ma obeye abrempon won adichire mu ampa mo nchiche se sa akira subai ma onya subai an ehotie dianke kani wo Subaya ya mani pedu e chiri. Diya e mani pedu fa fa. Abin fuo ya damase. E wuma siya mu diye mu damu befuwa. Ma ya prete se jao ne fa. O fuko siya na u mwa diye fiye mu. Professor and the Central Regional Minister, Honorable Dr. Mary Gold Hassan. Member of Parliament of New South, Honorable John Martin Porto, representative of the Vice Chancellor CCC, who is also our distinguished guest speaker, Professor Ms. Davis, Dean of the College of Education Studies, University of Cape Town, principals of sister colleges present. Manum and elders of the same name. The MC for Asin Fosi Municipality, Honorable Nicholas P.P. Bakun, Municipal and District Directors of Education, the clergy and other religious leaders, 
management and staff of Pursuit College of Education, alumni of Pursuit College of Education present, graduates, their families and friends, all virtual participants, friends from the media, students present, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the management, staff, and students of Pursuit College of Education, I warmly welcome you all to the 12th Congregation Ceremony of the College. As you are all aware, graduation is a significant event in the life of any educational institution. Particularly, it is a day of joy for graduates after they have gone through the mail prove themselves worthy of the award of certificates. Today, we are passing out two batches of our students to join teachers in the basic schools across the country after taking, their pass, after taking and passing their licensure examinations. However, as a measure to prevent the spread of COVID-19 out of your busy schedules, to honor our invitation to celebrate the individual and collective achievement of our students. We see this as a sign of friendship to facilitate learning in our schools. Mr. Chairman, the current student population of the college stands at 1,245, 804 of whom are males, and 441 females. Today, we are graduating two badges, the 2019 and 2020 year groups. For this year, the graduates made an impressive performance. Out of the 391, 27 of them representing 6.9% at first class, 181 representing 46.3% at second class upper, 122 representing 2% at third class, sorry, second upper, and then 43 representing 11% at third class, 18 representing 4.6%. There were no failures. Congratulations, graduates. These impressive results have been achieved by dint of hard work and strive for excellence by both our students and hard working staff. Congratulations to you all for the great job done. To our staff strength and development. Mr. Chairman, Pursue College of Education has a total staff strength of 160 teaching staff. This number is far below the human power needs of the college and adversely affects both academic slots for staff recruitment, severely constrains work at the college. Our student lecturer ratio currently stands about 42 students to one teacher, as against the GTEC norm of 27 students to one teacher and 18 students to one teacher for the social sciences and humanities and the sciences respectively. This situation adversely affects academic work as there are simply not enough teachers to teach and provide the necessary support services for our students. Similarly, the number of non-teaching staff in the college is inadequate, especially in departments such as the kitchen and cafeteria, security, grounds and conservancy. One effect of this one effect of the migration of the colleges of education into tertiary institutions is that much of the weeding and cleaning works that were previously done by students are no more done by them. And so we need more staff to weed the compound, keep the lawns and fields, and clean the surroundings. Because we are unable to secure clearance to recruit more staff, the college is compelled to engage the services of casual staff from our limited IGF. This, however, exerts a great toll on our already inadequate financial resources. It is therefore our humble appeal to government to 
grant the college the necessary clearance for the recruitment of staff in the colleges of education generally to enable us to operate at our optimum level in the training of teachers for the nation. Another significant challenge facing the college is the movement of our staff to join the university. And this is a situation that affects all colleges in the country. The growing migration of staff take up teaching appointments in the university. As part of the arrangements to transition the teacher training colleges to colleges of education to run degree programs, teaching staff in the colleges were required to upgrade themselves to a minimum of the Enfield degree. Colleges of education have therefore been using our annual get fund allocations for staff development support our staff to meet this requirement. And many tutors are taking advantage of this package to pursue MPhil and PhD degrees in the universities. Upon completion of their higher degree studies, however, many of the tutors are now migrating to see greener pastures in the regular and technical universities, thereby further worsening the already dire staffing situation in the colleges of education. We which leak during rain and cause discomfort to occupants, as well as damage to their property. Moreover, door and window frames in many of our buildings are rotten and urgently require replacement. A recent inspection of our buildings by an expert revealed that most of the electrical fittings have also expired and urgently need replacement to reduce the risk of fire accident. Again, our science and ICT laboratories lack the necessary equipment and resources for effective teaching and learning of science and ICT related courses. In fact, most equipment in these laboratories are obsolete and urgently require replacement to allow for effective teaching and learning. Mr. Chairman, I find it quite embarrassing to say that during end of semester examinations, we often have to borrow basic laboratory equipment like hand lenses and microscopes from nearby secondary schools to enable our students to do their practical exam. As tertiary institutions, we should rather learn support to the secondary schools and not the other way around. Last year, we engaged the services of a laboratory engineer to do a quantity survey for our science laboratories for retooling. The report he submitted indicated that we need about 1.6 million studies to make the three science laboratories, that is biology, chemistry, and physics, fit for purpose. This is way beyond the financial strength of the college. and We need support from government and other stakeholders. We also need desktop computers, printers, and accessories to refurbish our ICT laboratory, which is now being used as a classroom due to the obsolete nature of the computers and other equipment. Besides, the college's internet system is not functional due to inadequate bandwidth. However, the cost involved in getting larger bandwidth is too high and thus unaffordable to us. We therefore need support to upgrade our internet bandwidth for a functional internet system. The college library is also in poor state. The library space is inadequate, the growing number of students and staff, while most of the books, journals, and other resources are obsolete or irrelevant to the programs we offer. In this age of digitization, the college needs a digital or online library system that allows students and lecturers access online library resources for teaching, learning, and research. Our mental university, the University of Cape Coast, recently organized a workshop to train our college librarians, IC staff, and other key officers of the college on the use of e-library platforms. And we are grateful to the UCC and the Samjona Library for their support. However, the operation of a digital library system requires availability of computers and other internet-enabled devices and the functional internet connectivity. But the money required to put these in place are way beyond the financial strength of the college. 
We therefore appeal to stakeholders and friends of the college to come to our aid in this regard. Another key area of, area of need is office accommodation for staff. In fact, apart from heads of departments, our teachers have no offices where they can sit to prepare for teaching, marking of assignments, exams, counseling of students, or writing their research papers. The administrative and accounts staff also work in crowded offices which are not conducive for effective work. To solve this problem, management with the kind approval of the governing council is converting an uncompleted guest house into staff offices. The project is currently underway and has reached roofing level. When completed, this will go a long way to make the work of our hardworking teachers and other staff more comfortable. Mr. Chairman, these are some of the problems that hamper or weaken our efforts to provide quality teacher training. We therefore appeal to government and other stakeholders to provide the college education with the needed financial resources, infrastructure and equipment, as well as grant technical clearance for staff development to enable us to carry out a mandate to training quality teachers well equipped with 21st century knowledge and skills, deliver quality education to learners in our basic schools. We also wish that government through the GET Fund to make more resources available to complete infrastructural projects which are going on too slowly or have been stalled. The construction of the college auditorium started some 11 years ago and is yet to be while the female hall of residence, which also started around the same time, has not gone beyond the foundation stage. We will be happy to have these projects completed to augment our facilities for effective academic work. Message to graduates. Mr. Chairman, my dear graduates, you are the reason for our gathering here today, and we are happy for you. Your graduation today testifies to the fact that you have worked hard and withstood the challenges in the academic arena. You have sacrificed your energy and time to pursue a noble career, and you should celebrate your well-deserved success. Today, the college is proud of you and is sending you into the world as its able ambassadors. As you go into the world, keep the flag of Fosco flying high and exhibit the values it has instilled in you wherever you find yourself. You are graduating at a time when teacher education is going through major reform to promote quality and professionalism in the noble profession. Having received training at post school, I am confident that you are well imbued with the qualities of good teachers as enshrined in the national teacher standards which form the basis for the teacher licensure exams. Remember our core values, character, wisdom, and knowledge, and instill this in the learners that you'll be working with. Mr. Samuel H. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our most dedicated staff for the year. Can we give a round of applause? Now the student award. The first is the C Enterprise Award. It's for the best behaved female graduate. Goes to the next award is the Lamine Enterprise Award. It's for the big
Principals Award is for the most dedicated that person is can be a bike. Then Madam Speaker Commission Award. That is for the best behaved graduate. Best female graduate general goes to what Mali. The next award is Madam Joyce Nina. This is for the best. Professor Ian Abeka for the best new graduate general art. It goes to a stage. BNS Japan Award. That is the best new sports graduate. And the person is Prince Okoku. And the Professor Jonathan Fletcher, that is for the best meal. That is for the best meal and female graduate. The best meal graduate, the best female graduate, science and math, Amy Salary. Then the Alex Alex AJ and Ponta Award. That is the for the best graduate teaching graduate. Again, it goes to a stage. And then the last the last award that uh, I'll take it. That is the MS Alpha. That is the overall best graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, these are the Lady Ohine Japan. District and Municipal Chief Executive Present, the Vice Representative, Professor Ernest Kofi Davis. University of Cape Coast, who himself is also the Provost College of Education Studies. The principal, Fosu College of Education, principals of sister colleges of education, convocation members, staff of the college, Nananum, Central Regional Director of Education, Alumni here present, graduates, distinguished invited guests, friends of, from the media, ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols duly observed. I bring you warm greetings from the Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Edichum, the Minister for Education, who could not join us this morning due to some other pressing and equally important engagements in Accra. He would have loved to be here in person, but his schedule for today made it practically impossible for him to be here. I hereby read his speech as follows. Prof Chair, I'm delighted to be part of the 12th graduation ceremony of your esteemed College of Education. I'm grateful to the Governing Council and the management for this invitation. I bring you special felicitations from the President of the Republic of Ghana, 
His Excellency Nana Dudankwa Kufuado, and the entire Ministry of Education. Prof Chair, graduation ceremonies are special events for all stakeholders in education, especially the graduates and their parents. I believe you are highly elated today because you have met the requirement for the award of Diploma in Education. This year's congregation ceremony is unique because the graduating students are the last batch of students to be awarded basic education diploma from the colleges of education. This marks a significant milestone in our quest to transform teacher education and training in Ghana. Colleges of education have moved from pre-tertiary certificate awarding institutions to tertiary institutions with the passage of Act 847 with a special mandate to train specialized teachers that can deliver quality education to the citizenry of our country. It is against this backdrop that I find the theme pre-tertiary curriculum reforms in Ghana, implications for teacher education at the colleges of education in Ghana for this graduation ceremony appropriate and timely. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the elevation of the colleges of education from pre-tertiary to tertiary institutions had some implications for our colleges. Research and professional development have become a key component in this new dispensation. Colleges are therefore expected to contribute to knowledge um, to improve teaching, learning, and professional practice in the classroom. To this end, I entreat you to come out with innovative research work that can promote best practices in teaching and learning in our schools for socio-economic transformation of our country. Prof Chair, the first batch of the free SHS policy, which started in 2017-2018 academic year, has completed and have joined various tertiary institutions this academic year. This undeniably has resulted in the need for infrastructural expansion in the tertiary institutions, including the colleges of education. Therefore, infrastructural expansion is very high on government's agenda, which POSU College of Education will also surely receive its fair share. Professor Chairman, Transforming Teacher Education and Learning, TTEL, which supported the capacity and professional development of colleges of education between 2016 and 2020. The program was successful and impactful on teacher education. It is my hope that the colleges of education will continue the good work initiated by TTEL and GTEL especially the professional development of your staff and partnership with schools for supported learning. Prof Chair, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to take this opportunity to congratulate the graduates. This is no mean an achievement in life. Not only have you acquired an academic certificate you have also earned for yourself a decent profession. The nurturing of the future leaders of this country for producing yet another group of teachers. I wish to congratulate you once again for your successful completion of your diploma program. Go out and be good ambassadors of change for progress and development in our society.
I wish you a happy graduation and a successful career. I thank you for your attention. God bless our homeland, Ghana. Thank you, Dr. Eric Nkansa. We will now call on the Central Regional Minister, Honorable Mrs. Justina Marigold Asan, for her address. Thank you. in learning outcomes at the basic school system. And this, among others, called for the transformation of the pre-tertiary, the opportunity to offer solutions that will be relevant to the world. It is imperative, therefore, for us to inculcate into our curricula the creation and the use of present information systems to enable our students and graduates fit adequately into current and global demands and also resonates with the current policy of His Excellency the President's vision of digitizing the economy. Prof Chair, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to congratulate the Governing Council, the Principal, the College Administration, and indeed all stakeholders on the able manner with which they have worked together to fulfill the mission of the college. I wish to also congratulate the graduates on this occasion for successfully completing their programs of study in this great institution. My dear graduate, please accept my congratulations, not only on the basis of your academic achievements, but also on the virtues which you have acquired during your period of stay in the college as students. I'm aware that your stay in this college was not easy. Yes, I know, I'm also a teacher and I went through same in Ola College of Education. And I know what you go through as students to achieve this beautiful feat. So we share in those challenges and difficulties. That's notwithstanding. I'm happy to note that the challenges you faced did not give you cause to give up your programs of study here. Due to your perseverance and determination to succeed, you persisted and to the end against all the odds. As a result, your efforts are being rewarded in the form of diplomas and certificates, which will be very soon conferred on you. Those of us here witnessing the honor being done to you share in your joy of being new graduates. I have no doubt that you will bring the knowledge and skills that you have acquired during your stay here to bear on the total well-being of our dear nation. I entreat you as you prepare to enter the world of work to be guided by the wise saying that the quality of education that a student receives is better judged in terms of what he or she does in society and not the type of certificate he or she receives. I wish therefore to urge you to be disciplined, hardworking, and not to engage in anything that will cut short your continuous education. Be prepared to accept challenges and postings to areas where your services will be most needed. I wish once again to thank the governing council, the principal, the staff, and the entire student body of Fosu College of Education for making me part of this memorable location. May God bless this college and all who in diverse ways have brought this far. Thank you very much for your warm attention.
Thank you very much, Honorable Mrs. Justina Marigold Hassan. We will now call on Honorable Reverend John Intim Fodjo, the Member of Parliament for Assin South, to give us his address. Thank you. Council Chairman, Professor Dansu Mensa, Nananom, the representative of the Honorable Minister for Education, Dr. Eric Nkansa, the Honorable Regional Minister, Honorable Justina Marigold Hassan, and standing on already established protocol, I deem it a great honor and privilege to witness the 12th Annual Congregation of Fosu College of Education. And in my capacity as the Member of Parliament for Ascent South, as a beneficiary of the dedication of tea trained from this noble institution, and as a friend of the Center of Excellence, I do pass these few remarks. I must acknowledge the great contribution that Fosu College of Education, the decades past, have given towards the education system in Ghana. All across the length and breadth of the country, I've had calls to interact with various notable personalities who were either trained by this noble institution or were trained by people who obtained their teacher training by this noble institution. And for this reason, I must commend current and past council and governing uh, council and stakeholders for this, of this great institution and to join advocacy for every needed support that will be available to ensure that the great standards that over the years you have chalked is sustained and not abated. To my graduating candidates, I must congratulate you foremost for going through the three-year training, the toil and study, the hard work, dedication that you have put forth, and I must also congratulate you for joining the noble profession, uh, successfully setting the licensure exams and passing. You are welcome to the noble profession. As a trained mineral engineer, I was trained to identify a field, to conduct reconnaissance, to search and explore for minerals, to deploy appropriate technology to extract a mineral from the ground, and to pass it through the appropriate technology and the application of safe chemicals to ensure that a mineral of value is extracted out of which, and then the gang is separated. Having obtained the mineral, I was trained further to refine it until a market value that is pure is obtained of the mineral. That is a summation of the, of the work of a teacher. A teacher that has newly graduated, the challenge and the child to you is to go out there to the length and breadth of this country, wherever that your services will be needed, wherever that you'll be posted. Be it a high performing school, be it a low performing school, be it a rural area or an urban center. But as you're going, the challenge is to identify talent and to go recognizing that there are, there are raw talents, very brilliant people whose future depend on you, whose only hope to be able to contribute meaningfully to nation building tomorrow rests in your dedication. Some years ago, as a child in one of the most remote parts of the country, Asin Krua, and we have Asin Krua in many parts of the country, a town where there was no access to electricity, a town where there was no access to telecommunication amenity, a town where we're not endowed with modern infrastructure for education, but I benefited from the shared dedication of teachers that had received their training from various colleges of education who accepted posting to my village, and today, if I stand here proudly as a mineral engineer, I stand on the shoulders of a teacher. If I stand here proudly as someone that meaningfully contributes to policy making and legislation in this country, I stand here proudly on the shoulders of a teacher. If today, by dint of higher learning in foreign policy, I'm able to contribute modestly to Ghana living in harmony in the international system and aligning our po policies to global goals, I do so firmly and proudly standing on the shoulders of teachers. 
if I'm able every Thursday and every Sunday to give pastoral care and sound theological teaching, I do so standing proudly on the shoulders of teachers. And I know that many other engineers, medical doctors, researchers, professors, lawyers, accountants, economists, and any other profession for that matter will all stand on the shoulders of teachers because they were all taught by the teachers. That singles out for a very enviable recognition of the teaching profession which no one can take away from the teaching profession and for which I would want you to be so proud as you're going out there to begin your career to know that you are proud members of this noble profession. In our world today, in our society today, a wide consensus has been built on the fact that education is the engine and the tool around which economic transformation can be realized. That, I believe, strongly is true, and I'm so much inclined to that. And that also brings us to the recognition that that engine for economic transformation and that tool for economic transformation will have to be programmed and propelled by hands and brains. And those hands and brains are the teachers. It would take teachers to be able to program our engine and our tools for economic transformation. And so teachers are the center and the fulcrum of our economic pursuit, and for which I joined the calls for, for the optimum levels of investment into our education system, and in particular, into our teaching welfare. When you look at the success stories of countries that are advanced in education and who take education really seriously and invest commensurately in same, we can talk of the success stories of, of Vietnam, or Finland, of Singapore, of Australia, and such other countries. These were countries that invested heavily in education. These were countries that held teacher welfare and motivation at the forefront of policies. And that is why I am most gladdened looking at the past five years, the efforts of government in, 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 in investing heavily into education and in putting teacher motivation at the forefront. Currently, for the past five years on the average, the education budget has been 3.8% of GDP. It has also been 15.5% of total appropriation of Ghana. And 85%, whooping 85% of education budget on the average year on year has been dedicated to compensation. This falls within the global thresholds of healthy economies and economies that take educational investment seriously, not forgetting the huge flagship and monumental investment into the free SHS flagship policy. This, I'm convinced that if Ghana is to go steadily the path that it has chosen the past five years, we are indeed gradually moving towards the desired place we want to see our education. I would want to assure you that just as some level of burden was removed at the restoration of teachers' training allowances and the recent reforms have seen that newly posted teachers do not have to wait for several months before the arrears of their salaries are paid, you have the hope that you are moving into a, an incentivized profession. And there's opportunity for promotion when you are due. And just uh, as opposed to the hitherto system where a laborious process of face-to-face -face interview and a system where many, where, uh, many held the perception of corruption and nepotism was raided and, and one had to go through all the struggle before securing a promotion has been done away with. Now it was a thing of the past at the deployment of the aptitude test for promotion for some selected ranks of, of applicants. You have the hope that a meritorious process is available for you as and when you are due for promotion. And just when you are due for promotion, as has been done the past few years, you will be able to receive prompt reflection of your new level of emolument. I must end on the note of calling all to embrace the laudable initiative by my, my, the venerable, honorable minister for education, the honorable Yao Ose Edutum, reforming secondary education and ensuring that junior high school receives the true definition and true significance and remodeled and investment and resourcing pushed into it to ensure that people that go through our GHS system are adequately prepared and, and sufficiently equipped to continue the ladder of education. I was so glad in, in recent conversations 
when the Minister for Education, Honorable Yao Ose Edutum, hinted of his novel initiative of setting up a, a call center where teacher complaints and concerns will be promptly attended to by task force, which he himself will personally be monitoring on a dashboard to be able to ensure that every teacher living in every part of the country, any concerns whatsoever that you have, is ferried through the right channels and to be assured that there's someone out there who's listening to your concerns, who will deliver responses promptly, and you have your sound mind to continue to teach. On this note, I must commend President Kufado for the bold initiative of free SHS. Contrary to the opinion held by others that free SHS is failing, available data indicates strongly from the 2020 WIAC report that out of the 465 students who sat in the WIAC exam from all over the countries in West Africa, who scored A in all subjects, 411 of them, between 85 to 90 percent, came from Ghana's free SHS product. And as a matter of fact, for the first time in several decades, Ghana outperformed all other countries in the WIAC system. And Ghanaian students, proud product of free SHS, who are 50 percent of them, scored A1 to C6 in all core subjects. These indicators are certainly not giving any, an indication of a failing policy. They are an indication of a robust policy, which all stakeholders are encouraged to support augmenting. Thank you very much, and congratulations once again. Thank you, Honorable Reverend John in Team Fodio. We will now take a musical interlude from the choir. Thank you.
Gana, gana nyikba, gana, gana nyikba, yajra toy neye, yajra toy neye, a blood to a baba, gana nyikba, gana, gana nyikba. ก้านานิกบาจัชรัตโทยเนเยจัชรัตโทยเนเยอาบลอเดตูวาฟากานานิกบามาวุนักปลอวุเตเตกานานิกบามาวุนักปลอวุเตเตกานานิกบามาวุ
Thank you very much for your beautiful performance. We will call on the guest speaker, Professor Ernest Kofi Davis, to give us his address. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Chairman of the Governing Council of Fosu College of Education, Professor Dominic Dansumensan, the representative of the Minister of Education, Dr. Eric Nkansa, members of the College Council here present, the Central Regional Minister, Honorable Justice Marigold Assan, the DCE for Assen North, the Director General of GTEC, Prof. Mohammed Salifu, Assen South MP, Honorable John Intim Fojo, the Principal of Fosu College of Education, Dr. Anthony. Bob Berrier, forgive me. <laughs> the MCE for Asen Fosu Municipality, Mr. Nicholas Fifi Bacon, principals from Sister Colleges of Education here present, the regional. Director of Education, the Municipal Director of Education, Mrs. Mercilisa Nananam, Convocation and Staff of Fosu College of Education, Graduate, Friends from the Media, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. I deem it a great honor and unique privilege to be invited to address this historic and special congregation. I think this congregation is special and historic because as the representative of the Minister of Education said, it marks the last the graduation of the last batch of diploma in basic education teacher trainees. I wish to use this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to the management of Fosu College of Education and the entire organizing committee for the honor done me. May the good Lord bless you. Mr. Chairman, you would agree with me that there cannot be a more appropriate team for the 12th annual con congregation of Fosu College of Education than what has been chosen by management and the organizers, that is, the pre-tertiary curriculum reforms in Ghana, implication for teacher education at the colleges of education. I am grateful that I've been invited to share my thoughts on this all important thing. I will share my thought by taking you through the importance of relevant quality and holistic education to the socio-economic development of a country. 
I will also take you through the pre-tertiary curriculum reforms briefly and the implication of the reforms at the pre-tertiary level for teacher education at colleges of education. I will use the opportunity to give some words of advice to the graduates and conclude my speech. Mr. Chairman, you would agree with me that the importance of quality, relevant, and holistic education to the socioeconomic development of a country cannot be overemphasized. It is for this reason that the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 4 highlights the need for countries to, I, I quote, ensure inclusive and equitable education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. My emphasis is for all. Countries with large proportions of well-educated population will always supply their industries with high quality labor force, which could translate into high productivity, creation of more businesses, safe and hygienic environment. This is because large proportion of the population, if well educated, provide private business owners the training that enables them to engage in effective cost-benefit analysis before they take critical decisions about their businesses. Well-educated people well-educated population will enable many people to know the effect of littering everywhere, for example. They will know that throwing empty bottles around could create the environment for mosquitoes to breed. Such a country is likely to have strong and healthy population, very low levels of unemployment, low crime rate, and low expenditure on import. Mr. Chairman, it is therefore not surprising that countries that have strong educational systems in the world today such as United Kingdom, Japan, United States of America are also counted among the world's top economies. It is against this background that the government of Ghana continues to invest huge resources in the development of quality human resources for industry through delivery of quality and relevant education for all. This is evident in the implementation of policies such as free senior high school education and the commissioning of extensive curriculum review exercise aimed at improving quality and relevance of education for all Ghanaian school children at the pre-tertiary level. Mr. Chairman, the pre-tertiary curriculum review aims, among other things, to turn out graduates with requisite knowledge, skills, values, and attitude to engage in critical thinking and problem solving. The change from the objective-based curriculum arrangement to standard-based curriculum arrangement shows that 
The focus of learning in schools in Ghana now requires the student to show what they can create or do with the knowledge they have acquired through learning. This implies that it would not be enough for students to think critically, but also creatively. That is, after thinking critically to gain insight, they need to use their insight to innovate or create. Mr. Chairman, I believe this is a step in the right direction because it will prepare generation of high quality human resource who have the entrepreneurial orientation through education, even at the basic school level for the country. Mr. Chairman, the change from objective-based curriculum arrangement to standard-based also implies that teachers cannot use the learning pace of the average student to inform the pace of lesson delivery. Lesson delivery must provide opportunities for students to learn at their own pace. This calls for differentiated teaching and learning arrangement. This implies that within the class, the below average, average and above average achieving student should be given the opportunity to benefit from classroom instruction. Differentiation tax will have to be given to students within the class who have already attained the required standard and those who are operating below the standard. Mr. Chairman, I must say that while the standard-based curriculum arrangement has the potential to challenge bright students to move higher and struggling students to come up and thus produce high-quality graduates. Its implementation requires resource-rich classroom environment and high-quality teaching. Teaching that produces critical thinking and creative thinking skills, as well as other 21st century skills, such as communication and interpersonal skills, among students cannot be ordinary. It must be of high quality. Mr. Chairman, we cannot talk about quality teaching without mentioning the role of the institutions that prepare teachers. In this talk, I will limit myself to the role of colleges of education in providing quality teachers through the delivery of quality teacher education programs to support the curriculum reforms at the pre-tertiary level. Teachers are key to the delivery of education in general and quality relevant and holistic education specifically. They are mediators between the curriculum and the student. Their interpretation of the curriculum and their classroom decisions affect students' opportunities to learn. It is for this reason that the role of colleges of education is key to the successful implementation of the pre-tertiary curriculum. Mr. Chairman, while the then training colleges of education, the tra training colleges. Mr. Chairman, while the then training colleges, now colleges of education, are noted for the role they played in supporting the implementation of major curriculum in reforms in the country over the past years, mainly through 
preparation of high quality teachers, it is evident that the demands of the new curriculum reforms currently taking place in the country will require them to do more. Mr. Chairman, in order to ensure that high quality teachers who are equipped with 21st century skills are trained to support the implementation of the pre tertiary curriculum reforms, the Ministry of Education, through transforming teaching and learning projects, has provided important national documents, such as the National Teachers Standard and National Teacher Education Curriculum Framework, which have informed the development and delivery of Bachelor of Education curricula being run by Colleges of Education. Platforms have been created for tutors to engage in continuous professional learning sessions to sharpen their teaching and assessment skills. Each of the public colleges of education has also been affiliated to a mentoring university to provide them the needed support. While these efforts by the government through the Ministry of Education to the colleges of education are commendable, at the end of the day, these efforts must reflect in the quality of teachers that are produced by the colleges. This calls for the need for the colleges of education to be well resourced to deliver quality teacher education. Since improved curriculum and enhanced capacity of tutors alone may not be sufficient to turn out the kind of quality teachers the nation requires. This means that some of the major bottlenecks that have the tendency to affect the delivery of quality teacher education at the colleges of education, such as lack of laboratory equipment for practical sessions in practical oriented courses, poor ICT infrastructure, including weak internet connectivity, poor logistics to support the implementation of supported teaching in school, including transportation challenges, lack of specialists to teach certain key courses in the various subject areas, just to mention a few, should be addressed. For example, while the new curriculum requires students to frequently visit schools in order to connect what they are learning at the colleges to the realities in the basic school, limited means of transport at the colleges makes it difficult to effectively implement this activity. Mr. Chairman, for the colleges to supply quality teachers needed to successfully implement the pre-tertiary curriculum reforms, they must be supported by the government and other non-governmental organizations to continue to build their ICT infrastructure to that level that will support effective blended teaching and learning. Apart from the fact that blended teaching and learning might stay with us even after COVID, exposure of students to online teaching and learning contribute towards building their ICT skills, which is also one of the 21st century skills. Tutors should use the knowledge and skills acquired through their professional learning sessions to model teaching practices that will equip teacher trainees with knowledge, skills, 
attitudes and values required of the 21st century teacher. The hallmark of quality tertiary lecturer or tutor is the insight he or she brings into the teaching and learning situation through constant research. College tutors are therefore required to constantly engage in research in their areas of specialization in order to be abreast with current discussion in the area. This will position them to be able to provide trainees with quality learning opportunities that are grounded in current literature. Mr. Chairman, permit me to offer some words of advice to the graduates. My dear graduates, accept my congratulations. You have made it. I am a proud teacher and would never quit teaching. Because for me, it is the best profession. I am who I am today because of teaching. You have chosen a noble profession. Many of the great people who are remembered today for their contribution to humanity, such as the Lord Jesus Christ, Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the first president of Ghana, were all teachers. My dear graduates, remember that to achieve greatness, you have to serve. And our Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated that to the extent of washing the feet of his disciples. Quality service rendered in human humility is key to achieving greatness. I know your training has prepared you well to promote quality learning among students. Please be prepared to provide quality service to any group of Ghanaian children who might need your services irrespective of their social, cultural, economic, or ethnic background. Accept postings to rural areas where your services may be needed most and be interested in the learning progress of our students. Ensure that your teaching does not only produce knowledge and skills, but also attitudes and values. For your teaching to produce de desirable attitudes and values in your student, you must be a good role model. Finally, be a lifelong learner. Many of the knowledge and skills you have acquired today may be obsolete within the next few years. Endeavor to add on your knowledge by constantly learning. Seize every opportunity to learn, for excellent teachers are good reflectors and learners. Take advantage of the top-up programs to upgrade yourself and ensure that you are digitally literate in order to remain relevant in this fast-changing world. Mr. Chairman, I will conclude by saying that for the pre-tertiary curriculum reforms to achieve its aim of providing quality and relevant education to all Ghanaian school children, the colleges of education would have to play a key role of ensuring continuous supply of high quality teachers who are well equipped with 21st century skills. Although the curriculum for training teachers at the colleges of education have been upgraded and reviewed to support the training of quality teachers for our schools, there is the need for the colleges 
to be properly resourced to enable them to turn out the kind of teachers the nation requires to successfully implement Thank you very much, guest speaker, Professor Ernest Kofi Davis. We will now have the conferment of diplomats from the Vice Chancellor's Rep. Will the graduating students of the college please stand up? I serve Mr. Donko, the Vice Principal of Fusi College of Education, presents to you the graduates for, of the college for 2019 and 2020 batches, standing before you and others who are unavoidably absent and for whom I stand prosy. These graduates, having followed their approved program of study over the stipulated period, and pass the required examinations have become eligible for academic awards to which their studies entitle them. I pray for the confirm confirmment of the awards due them. By the authority vested in the academic board of the University of Cape Coast, I, Professor Ernest Kofi Davis, Provost, College of Education Studies, University of Cape Coast, representing the Vice Chancellor, University of Cape Coast, your mentor institution, now hereby pronounce the graduates of FOSU College of Education, FOSU duly graduated. Accept my congratulations. Mr. Chairman, permit me to stand on the protocol already established to extend the Vice Chancellor's greetings to all. He would have loved to be with you, but was unable to come because of equally important official assignment. Thank you. Please turn the tussle of your calves to the left. You are now graduates of Fusu College of Education. And please sit. Please sit. Okay. 
All graduates who had first class should please stand up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, shall we give them a standing ovation? Getting a first class is not an easy task. Thank you very much. Please sit down. There are other graduates who could have, um, there are other graduates who could not physically join us because of the observance of the COVID-19 protocols. They are joining us virtually. Thank you. Congratulations, dear graduates. Shall we rise for the alumni oath? Please repeat after me. I do solemnly swear to faithfully fulfill my duties as graduate of Fosu College of Education, infused by the spirit of his mission to serve the needs of students, I will endeavor to earn my own place among alumni who by their devotion to this ideal have brought recognition and honor to their alma mater. I commit myself to the highest standards of service, to my community and country. I will provide moral, intellectual, and financial support through the Alumni Association. And I will encourage others to contribute and participate in the activities and noble work of Mother for School. So help me God. Thank you. This is where we draw the curtains on the congregation ceremony. I now call on the chairman of the governing council, Professor Dominic K. Danso Mensa, for the dissolution of the congregation. Thank you. Vested as the chairman of the governing council of Fosu College of Education, I, Professor Dominic Kwakudan Sumensa, do hereby declare the assembly of the 12th annual congregation of the college duly dissolved. Thank you. Thank you, Council Chairman. We will take the college anthem again and we call on the choir to help us to do that.
Thank you, you may be seated. Reverend Quay Green will take our closing prayer from Reverend Quay Green. Thank you very much. Please, let us be on our feet as we take the closing prayer. In a moment, I just want you to reflect what the Lord has done for us, taking us through the program from the beginning to the end. Just whisper something to the Lord. He has been so faithful to us. from our council chairman to the graduates. God has been so faithful to us as a nation. Even during COVID, God was still seeking us through. So if you, are, if you have graduated today, it's just by the doings of our Lord. Gracious Lord, we are so grateful to you once again. We thank you for the fire you've brought us. We thank you for seeking us through, through the program. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Unto your hands, Lord, we commit our spirit, our souls, and our bodies. We pray once again that as we bring the curtain to the end and we also getting ready to live here, we commit all those who are going to travel from here into your care. May you, Lord, grant them travel mates, all of us, those of us taking car and even going by foot. We pray that you will have your own way in us. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you for what you have done for us. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we thank you. Amen. Thank you. Please, shall we still be upstanding for the recession? Thank you. 